With Red Dead Redemption 2 right around the corner, we here at Suggestive Gaming figured now would be a good time to go over the story of the first game to catch up. So let's take a look at John Marston's story before we go back to his early days later this year. Also, make sure you stick around because afterwards we'll take a look at the non-canon Undead Nightmare expansion as well as the game's precursor, Red Dead Revolver. Without further ado, this is what you need to know about the Red Dead series. Our story begins in the year 1911, where in a town called Blackwater, the FBI have taken former outlaw John Marston. Marston is offered a political pardon as well as his family's safety on the condition that he brings down the other members of his former gang, starting with a man named Bill Williamson. Marston travels to Fort Mercer to appeal to Williamson, who sicks his men on Marston in turn, berating him for his turning on the gang. Marston reaches for his revolver, but is shot by one of Williamson's men. Presuming him dead, the gang leave Marston's body to rot. However, a few hours later, a rancher named Bonnie McFarlane happens across him and takes him to a ranch to recover. After repaying the McFarlanes by helping around the ranch, Marston meets up with a band of unlikely partners, including a U.S. Marshal, a con artist, a treasure hunter, and an arms dealer, and the group stage an attack on Fort Mercer. The group attack the fort only to find that Williamson has fled across the border to Mexico to seek help from another former member of their gang, Javier Escuela. Marston follows him to Mexico and meets a Mexican army colonel named Agustin Allende. Allende informs Marston that he has captured both Williamson and Escuela and will deliver them if John helps Allende and his army end an ongoing rebellion. After receiving Marston's help, however, it is revealed that Allende had lied from the beginning, and he tasks his right-hand man Captain Vincent de Santa with executing John. De Santa is interrupted by a group of rebels, along with their leader Abram Reyes, who save Marston and kill Allende's soldiers, but are unable to capture de Santa before he escapes. Reyes promises Marston that if he helps take down Allende, the rebels would help him find Williamson and Escuela. The group kill De Santa and hold true to their promise by finding and capturing Escuela. Escuela reveals that Williamson has been informed of Marston's uniting with the rebels and has hired Allende to protect him. The rebels along with Marston storm Allende's villa, killing his soldiers and quartering him inside. After the rebels break in, the two attempt to escape in an armored carriage, which Marston and Reyes are able to stop by killing its driver. After this, both Williamson and Allende are killed by Marston and Reyes. Reyes then leaves to advance on the capital, and John returns to Blackwater to meet with the FBI. There, the two agents, Edgar Ross and Archer Fordham, inform Marston that his job is not complete until he helps them hunt down the leader of his former gang, Dutch Vanderlind. Marston and the FBI wage several battles with Dutch and his new gang, and eventually they and the US Army storm his hideout. Marston eventually corners Dutch, who warns him that the government will always find a new monster, and to avoid capture, he kills himself by falling off a cliff. With his mission complete, John is allowed to return to his family at their ranch in Beecher's Point. He settles down with his wife Abigail, son Jack, and family friend Uncle, and swears to keep himself and his family away from trouble, abandoning his outlaw life for good. However, just as Dutch had warned, Ross double-crosses John, leading a large group of FBI and army men to attack the ranch. After Uncle is killed in the shootout, John tells his wife and son to leave while he stays back to defend the barn. John and Abigail share a kiss, and the mother and son ride off. John exits the barn to face Ross and his firing squad. Attempting to kill as many as he can in his last moments, John is eventually shot dead. As he falls, Ross watches, lighting a cigar to celebrate the death of the final member of Dutch's gang before he and his men leave. Abigail and Jack hear the ceasefire, and return to find John's lifeless body, realizing that his sacrifice would keep them safe. They bury him on the hill overlooking the ranch next to Uncle. Upon his grave, they inscribe, Blessed are the peacemakers. Three years later, Abigail passes away, and Jack then sets his sight on tracking down the man who killed his father. He eventually finds Ross, now retired, and challenges him to a duel. Jack fires first and kills the man, avenging his father's death and leaving the rest of his story untold. While this is the end of John Marston's story, we are given another one, albeit a completely original and non-canon one, through the Undead Nightmare expansion to Red Dead Redemption. It begins with the Marston family in their home during a storm, discussing the fact that Uncle has not come home yet. However, right on cue, Uncle arrives infected with a zombie virus. John runs to fetch his gun, but while he is gone, Uncle bites Abigail, infecting her with the virus. John shoots Uncle and tends to Abigail, but she becomes undead and attacks Jack, turning him undead as well. John hogties both of them and leaves them behind to go to Blackwater to find a cure. There, and throughout his search for the cure, he encounters various characters that he met in his actual journey, all who he helps with their various supernatural problems. He eventually follows Leeds down to Mexico, where he meets the Mother Superior in a nunnery. After helping her save the town, she sends John to fetch her an undead. He does so, and she pours holy water on it, which causes it to erupt in a blue flame. 
Mother Superior sends John with holy water to clear out a nearby graveyard, and upon returning from the task, she tells him a woman informed her that the cause of the undead plague was because of something Abram Reyes has done. John finds Reyes, but he is now undead and trying to kill a woman. John kills Reyes, and the woman informs him that Reyes, trying to find a means of immortality, stole an ancient Aztec mask, starting the plague. The two return the mask to the crypt it was stolen from, and in doing so, the undead are returned to normal, and John makes his way back home. There, he finds that Abigail and Jack are back to their normal selves. Months later, Marston has been killed. However, Seth Briars, the aforementioned treasure hunter, digs up the mask once again, causing the plague to return. This raises John from the dead as well, however, since he was buried with holy water, he returns with a human soul, allowing him to prolong his life. While not connected to the story of John Marston or Dutch's gang, there is one other Red Dead game, Red Dead Revolver. For the sake of completion, let's take a look at the precursor to the Red Dead Redemption series. In the 1880s, Nate Harlow and his partner Griff strike gold in Bear Mountain. The two celebrate by creating a unique pair of revolvers for themselves, each inscribed with a scorpion. Later, however, Griff is captured by the Mexican army. He offers General Diego of the Mexican army half of the gold in Bear Mountain to spare his life. Diego agrees to this and sends his colonel Darren to kill Nate at the instruction of Griff to claim the other half of the gold for his own. Darren tracks Nate to his farm and shoots him and his wife, killing them. Nate's son Red, however, retrieves his father's revolver and shoots off Darren's left arm, causing him to flee. Years later, Red, now a bounty hunter, takes out a gang led by an outlaw named Bloody Tom. Attempting to transport their bodies to claim the bounties, Red is attacked by another gang and their leader, Ugly Chris. Red and the town's sheriff, O'Grady, survive the attack and defeat the gang, but Red must then take the sheriff into town to find a doctor to tend to his wounds. In the town of Brimstone, Red is tasked by its sheriff, Bartlett, to take on some bounties. After doing so, Red learns from the sheriff about the town's governor, Griffin, who owns Bear Mountain. Red, aware that his family was killed over the gold there, sets out to learn more but is roped into a fight in which he is forced to kill several patrons, leading to his arrest by Sheriff Bartlett, who reveals to Red that General Diego and Colonel Darren are still alive. Bartlett releases Red, who travels to a location where Diego's supply wagon is stationed. After destroying it, however, he is captured by Darren, who imprisons him within his mines. There, Red meets a soldier known as Buffalo Soldier and his cousin, Shadow Wolf. The three are freed and Red attacks Diego's fort and kills Darren. However, Shadow Wolf dies from wounds sustained during the battle. Buffalo Soldier goes to Governor Griffin to inform him of Red's plan, but Griffin reveals that he knew this all along, and captures Buffalo Soldier for helping Red escape. Later, Red intercepts a train carrying Diego's gold, and a battle ensues between Diego and Red. Critically wounded, Diego pleads with Red and offers him the gold. Red declines and kills Diego, avenging his parents' deaths. Later, Red learns that it was in fact Governor Griffin who led Diego to his parents to spare his own life. He attacks him at his mansion with the help of the sheriff and some townsfolk and eventually kills him in quick-draw fashion. The sheriff warns Red to leave, as killing a government official is a hangable offense, and offers to pay him, but he refuses the money, instead telling the sheriff to give it to the townspeople who helped him. Finally, Red retrieves Griff's revolver, bringing the two together once again. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please give us a like and subscribe for more. You excited for Red Dead Redemption 2? Let us know why in the comments, and make sure you leave a suggestion for what game series you'd like to see us cover in the future. See you next time!